So Andrew Luck is going to be out for the foreseeable future because he had a setback, right? Okay. The Cleveland Browns are switching to Deshaun Kaiser because they want to go back to the quarterback to try to find out what they really have. Okay. There's a team I'm going to get into later today in the show um, that we were all completely wrong about. Two other teams that we were kind of wrong about were the Browns and the Colts. No one affiliated the Browns or the Colts with tanking. But that's exactly what they're doing. Think about this. If you're tanking, there's so many different arguments people say for tanking, right? Like, they say that, oh, it's bad for the fans. Oh, it's bad for the players' morale. You know, oh, but then you can make the case, but you're getting young guys in there. And young guys are going to experience, and they're going to be, it's going to be valuable for them. You know, I don't like tanking. I don't like tanking for the pure basis of, as a business model, it's a terrible and it's just downright shitty. I love risks in business, but there was no risk in tanking. You still have people that are going to be season ticket holders. You still have people that are going to go to the games. You're still going to make. You're still going. To, you're still going to sell merchandise. Like all these owners. Yes, do some owners like a Jerry Jones and Robert Kraft make more? Yes, but trust me. Every single owner of one of these football teams is making a whole lot of money and is making a very good profit off these teams. Otherwise, they would no longer be the owner. That's how it works. So when you tank, you're really not losing a whole lot of money. You are, in turn though, if it turns out well, you are gaining a whole new set of revenue from the players that you're bringing in, the merchandise they're selling, the fans that are now coming to see, uh, see the game is buying tickets, buying subscriptions to watch like NFL, Red Zone, or if the NBA, NBA League Pass. Take a business like Apple, right? Apple is one of the largest fan bases in the world. Like in the world. I have a couple friends and I have an uncle who are crazy about Apple. And that's fine. You're allowed to be crazy about Apple. They have a lot of good products. They've been good to you for a lot of years. You know, everyone sits there and likes to, you know, hate on the iPhone. But hey, it's, I think, still like a 60-40 split in terms of iPhones to Androids. Don't exactly quote me on that. I remember seeing that number. I'm not 100% sure. If Apple were to tell you, hey, we're going to release like a bad iPhone or two over the next two years and some bad tablets over the next two years. But don't worry, we'll release bad stuff. So that way, by the time it turns around in like two years, we'll have good stuff. They would lose fans, they would lose merchandise sales, and they would lose revenue. You can't do it. To allow teams, and I've talked about blind loyalty before, and this is why blind loyalty is such a bad thing. Because as a fan, we're not rational people. But as a consumer, we are entitled to certain rights once we've purchased a product. When you purchase that product, you are entitled to that product working as it explained and theoretically being useful to you as you that's why you bought the product when your team is tanking there is no oh my product is servicing me my product is useful to me your product is just being bad and you don't have a repercussion of it as an owner like mark cuban just talked about it and mark cuban's one of the better owners in sports he went 17 years without ever missing the playoffs they won a title went to another nba finals and then he came back this last year, and the Mavericks weren't good, and there's people saying, hey, you should quit, sell the team. That's the extent of it, because Mark Cuban still profited extremely well off the Mavericks. Mark Cuban profited off his merchandise, his players' jersey sales. Like, It still worked for Mark Cuban. And even though you get a couple angry letters, I think you would gladly trade a couple angry letters for the millions upon millions of dollars that he made. And Mark Cuban's not even a guy who really it, I would accuse of tanking. He made the comments last year that, hey, we're just going to play young guys. And, you know, tanking kind of comes as a result of that. My issue with tanking, though, is when you take a team like the Colts, you take a team like the Browns, they're not trying to win. They're not even coming close to trying to win. Andrew Luck suddenly has a setback because you're 0-5. 
You're going to go back to Deshaun Kaiser because the first four starts of the year weren't good enough. They, they didn't give you some indication that, hey, maybe he's not quite ready yet. Like, everyone feels bad for Andrew Luck in this whole situation. It's like, oh, he's stuck with such a terrible franchise. What about the fans that have to endure this terrible franchise? What about Browns fans that have just had to... If you're a Browns fan under the age of 20, bless your soul. You know, this is why the Joe Thomas achievement um, from a couple weeks ago was so incredible. Joe Thomas might have had the worst 10,000 snaps in NFL history in terms of he was literally losing for like 9,000 of those 10,000 snaps. In business, you're not allowed to tank for a year or two and just be okay and come out on the bright side and be like, hey, you know what? We might even do this again in a couple years after our product or our star player is done. Stop letting teams get away with this. It's not okay. Let me also talk about a team we were all completely wrong about. And I mean dead, 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 dead wrong about. And anyone that says they weren't is either lying or just a, he's a fanatic. We had this thing called an election this last year, right? And we had this guy who... Majority of people would say was kind of crazy. This over the top celebrity who decided to put his name in running for president of the United States. And what did we all think? No chance. He's not going to do it. There's no way he comes even close. It's kind of funny. You know, it's a publicity stunt, get his name out there. But. Long term, no chance. Experts came out and told us he has no chance. Came out and said he's no way, there's no way he can win this state, he could win that state, there's no way he'll even gain enough to be in the final running. Do we know who our president is right now? But when when he went up against Hillary Clinton and there was no way he could win, he can't win this state, he can't win this state, he's not going to have enough polls, she's going to beat him to death in numbers, he's got all-time low popularity votes, look at what he said here, look at what he did here, there is no way, he's, he, he it's over, he's, he's got no chance. Once again, I ask, we know who our president is, right? Coming into this NFL season, we had two things that pretty much everybody was pretty convinced about. We had the Patriots were the top team in the league. And we had the New York Jets as the worst team in the league. There were people that even said the New York Jets were going to go 0-16. There's people like they're going to go 0-16. Maybe they get one win. They're tanking. They just traded Sheldon Richardson. There's no way they can do it. We know who's 3-3, three and three, right? And realistically should have at least had a chance to go to overtime with the quote-unquote best team Coming into the season, New England Patriots last Sunday? Oh, that's right. It's the New York Jets. Now, I'm not saying this from a stance of superiority because I was wrong about the Jets, too. I didn't have them going winless, but I definitely didn't have them. I probably didn't have them at three wins all season. Just because we have strong and loud opinions, and you guys have heard me say this many times, just you have strong and loud opinions just because the internet's really loud, doesn't mean it's true. This is how you have a 3-3 three and three Jets team that's a wild card playoff team right now. And you have, I believe, one game out of the wild card. And then you have a Donald Trump who's president. Now, just like the Jets and just like Donald Trump, it's still very early. There is still plenty of time and chance for us to theoretically be right in the long run. And the one guy to be crazy and deranged. And the other team to turn back into the bad heaving pile of shit that we all thought they were going to be. But we all have to admit that we were wrong. If you guys liked anything that you heard and or saw, please don't forget to go like and subscribe on YouTube. Throw some thumbs up for me. Uh, Don't forget to go to the iTunes podcast section. Go subscribe to there. So you can get the episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. SoundCloud, Stitcher, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Hardfile Podcast, Snapchat, JKid9080.